It's been 20 years since BMW was last in the super luxury coupe market. But now, the 8 Series name is back. And just like its predecessor, the brief is simple, but a bit ambitious. So BMW wants to take the comfort and luxury of a grand tourer, and it wants to combine those qualities with the high performance dynamics of a sports car. Has it managed? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. And remember, if you want to buy an 8 Series or any other new car, head to whatcar.com and look at the new car buying section while you're there. And hopefully, we can save you a lot of money in the process. Now, cars like this have to impress as much inside as they do on the road. And that's because if you're using it like a proper Grand Tourer, then you're gonna be doing massive journeys in it and spending a lot of time inside the car as part of that process. So once you've absorbed the exterior of the car with its flowing profile, taut surfaces, you're probably expecting something equally dramatic inside. Instead, what you're met with inside is actually an interior that only feels a bit like a plusher 5 series. So in terms of visual wow factor, the 8 series falls some way behind the Mercedes S-Class Coupe. But that isn't to say that we don't like it. Everything you see matches quite closely the new BMW X5, which is a really impressive interior. So it's very similar here. And there's lovely touches throughout, like the leather stitching on the dashboard, the brushes of chrome trim. Everything feels like it's been brilliantly incorporated into the environment. And BMW's always focused on restrained visual design in favor of outright build quality. And that's what it's really focused on here. And that's what shows. So it doesn't have much glitz or glamour, but everything you touch is outstanding quality. And it really is among the best of what you'll find in the class. And the good news continues with infotainment. So the 8 Series gets BMW's latest iDrive 7.0 infotainment touchscreen. And as well as that, it gets the live cockpit professional digital display for the driver here, which is a 12.3 inch screen. So those things combined have resulted in what is undoubtedly one of the very best infotainment systems on the market. They're not focusing on purely touchscreen like other manufacturers are. Instead, you've got a whole number of ways that you can interact with the features on iDrive. So you've got this brilliant rotary dial down here. You've got a very responsive and sharp touchscreen and you've got voice command functions and a few helpful shortcut buttons on the steering wheel as well as all these shortcut buttons around the rotary dial as well. Whether you're parked up or on the move, it's a really simple, intuitive design and it's definitely leading the market. As for space, up front, it's really generous. There's loads of legroom, loads of headroom. It's a really wide cabin as well. And for two adults up front, there'll be no problem at all. Now, the door opens nice and wide, which is good. So if you wanna get in the front, there's plenty of room. However, getting in the back is a bit of a task. So you have to slide the front seat forward and then you can see the space that you've got to try and clamber into the back is really very small indeed. So once you have eventually clambered into the back, you can see that headroom is pretty much non-existent. And when the front seats come all the way back, your feet are properly squashed underneath it. Leg room, again, not particularly generous. And basically, if you want this kind of car and you're regularly gonna be carrying passengers in the back, an S-Class Coupe has much more room. But the boot is impressive. So you can see, actually, inside, the load space goes really quite far back. And it's a usefully wide space here. However, the problem is that once you get into the usable space in the boot, it becomes much thinner. And also this opening's a bit narrow as well. There's a bit of a lip here, but still for this class, this really is one of the most impressive boots. However, if the 8 Series really wants to be a highly regarded premium GT car, it's got to answer one simple question. Would you be happy to cross the continent in one? Well, there's plenty of competition in that department. You've got the Aston Martin DB11 and the Bentley Continental GT if you want super luxurious mile munching coupes with big price tags. And then below them, in terms of price anyway, you've got the Mercedes S-Class Coupe. And then you've got the BMW 8 Series. Now, it might be a bit of a stretch to call this a cheap car, considering the starting price is around 80,000 pounds, but we'll explain in more detail later that actually, this is pretty good value compared to those rivals. But what's it like to drive? Well, the first thing that you notice when you get in is actually how the car seems to kind of shrink around you. Now that's in part thanks to its brilliant driving position, 
that offers great visibility and nice seats that hug you in as well. But that's also because of how agile it feels. Now the reasons for that are it gets all wheel steering as standard and it gets a limited slip differential on the rear axle to boost traction. So thanks to those small things, actually it makes this near two ton car feel pretty agile. But it's the steering that does let the side down a little bit. It just doesn't really offer the feedback that you want from a car like this. So it doesn't really let you know what's going on between the front tires and the road. So it might not be the best of the best, but if you do a massive journey in the 8 Series, you will still be pretty entertained by its handling. But will you be comfortable as well? Well, the truth be told is that the ride is on the firm side. And part of the reason for that is probably because of the fact that BMW has chosen steel springs for its suspension rather than air suspension. And the thinking behind that is that steel springs are traditionally the sportier choice. So don't get us wrong, this absolutely isn't a bone shaker, but it's just that the ride isn't a strength of the car. But the 8 Series does have an impressive selection of engines. Kicking off the range, you've got the xDrive 840D, which is a six-cylinder diesel engine. It's a hugely capable continent-crushing engine with silky smooth power delivery that gently ushers you along in town, but still offers impressive performance on the motorway. But this M850i that we're driving now would absolutely destroy it in a drag race. This is a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 that's borrowed and detuned from the M5, and it is outrageously quick. Really, this engine is just so, so impressive in its power delivery. But actually, the most remarkable thing about it is just how smooth it is. So the throttle response is pretty much instant, and then it just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls. And you can certainly imagine doing mile after mile in this and having a big smile on your face at the same time. But what's just as impressive about this engine, as much as its outright pace, is that when you want to quieten things down, you can stick it in comfort mode. And when you get your motorway cruise on, it's just so quiet and so smooth. This is a seriously impressive engine. And just as impressive, any speed, any gear, if you want to deploy all of its 523 brake horsepower, then you can do so without going sideways into a hedge. And there's virtually no drama at all. And that's in part thanks to its very impressive all wheel drive system. So really, this is actually a bit like a Bavarian Nissan GTR rather than a luxury GT. But really, the 8 Series just feels like a bit of a in-between kind of car. So it's fun to drive, and especially if you go for the M850i, that engine is just fantastic. But it's not quite as dynamically capable as a Porsche 911 or a DB11 or the Continental GT really either. The 8 Series is very impressive on the road, but it's not really compelling in one area. Whereas some of those other cars and its key rivals, admittedly, they're all more expensive. They all offer kind of one outstanding area that really, as a buyer, draws you towards them. But the 8 Series, it's more of a kind of a jack of all trades type car. But really, factor in the 840D's better running costs, and we think that's the engine that suits the car best, striking an appropriate balance between performance and economy. But how does the 8 Series stack up financially? Well, these are the key things to know about buying and owning a BMW 8 Series. Although the 8 Series is definitely at the premium end of the market, it actually represents decent value. The 840D is now the only way to get into a luxury sports diesel coupe. That diesel engine should also be good for 600 miles on a full tank, perfect for long distance motoring. But if diesel doesn't take your fancy, then the M850i still actually represents pretty good value. It's much cheaper than an equivalent S-Class Coupe, Continental GT and DB11. It's still a bit of a push to call something that costs £100,000 cheap though. Go for the M850i and you'll get outstanding performance, but you'll be spending a lot more time at the fuel pumps as well. The good news is, no matter what model you pick, you won't have to add many options. Everything gets two zone climate control, iDrive, front and rear parking sensors, a rear view camera, and electric seat adjustment. The M850i adds a sports exhaust system, M Sport differential, and lightweight 20 inch wheels. So pick an 840D and you're essentially picking a car in a class of its own. A diesel luxury sports coupe that offers flexible real world performance, is pretty cheap to run and gives you big miles in between fill ups. 
The M850i is a bit more of a mixed bag, so it's not quite as refined as a Mercedes S560 Coupe, nor is it as sharp to drive as an Aston Martin DB11. But regardless of which engine you choose, the 8 Series will give you impeccable build quality, fantastic infotainment and effortless real-world performance. For much more on the 8 Series, including our extended written review of it and all of its key rivals, head to whatcar.com. And remember, if you want to buy a new car, we can help you save some money in the process. So when you're on whatcar.com, go to the new car buying section and see how much money we could save you on your next new car. And if you've enjoyed this video, then give us a like and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you keep up to speed with all the latest new car reviews.